everybody, it's Miss Samantha, and I am greeting you from Miss Amy and Miss Emma's lower elementary school yard. So good to see you. So the theme of this garden is that it is a butterfly garden. So last time we visited this sensory garden next door, and today we're going to explore the butterfly garden. So what does that mean for a garden to be a butterfly garden? Well, basically it means that you are going to plant things there to try to attract butterflies, to bring the butterflies. So what would bring a butterfly? What do butterflies eat? Well, adult butterflies drink nectar and all flowers have nectar. So basically things that flower, also things that like to grow in full sun, butterflies like the sun. That's one reason they like our school. Um, but when butterflies have babies, the babies don't drink nectar. So who knows what we call a baby butterfly? Well, it starts out as an egg and then it becomes a caterpillar when it hatches. That's the larval stage. And then when it is a baby, it can only eat one single thing. A lot of the time, that's the case for butterflies. Not all of them. Sometimes they'll have like a whole family of plants that they can eat or a few different ones, but um, it's limited. It's not like they can just drink nectar from any flower the way their parents do. So the most important thing that you want to plant in a butterfly garden is host plants. So what is a host plant? A host plant is a plant that is the special food that a particular animal eats and a lot of times it can only eat that plant. So here we have some fennel. We planted that together a couple months ago actually. It looks dead but it's actually alive. It's very much alive. You can see it sprouting right here. Fennel's very fuzzy and it also has a smell that lets you know what it is. Fennel is the host plant for the black swallowtail butterfly. That's why we planted that. You guys recognize this from the last video? Bright green lettuce. These are mums. A lot of people buy them at the store. Um, they don't bloom all year round, but they stay alive. You can put them in the ground after you buy them and they live for a very long time. Who knows what this plant is? This is the passion flower vine, which makes a delicious passion fruit. We have already talked about that. That is the host plant for, does anyone remember? The golf fritillary. So the golf fritillary's caterpillars are orange with black spikes. Um, and the butterflies are orange. They kind of look like a monarch, but they don't have that reddish hue to them and they don't have the white polka dots all over their body like the monarchs do. Um, they have these amazing silver dots on their wings. If you find one dead and you get a chance to look up close, you'll just be amazed. They're actually metallic spots on their wings and they have metallic spots on their chrysalises too. So the wonders of nature never cease to amaze. Does anyone know what this plant is? This is called purple coneflower or Echinacea purpurea. It is used in a lot of tea. When you get sick, it's supposed to be really good for colds. Native Americans were using it for a long time before everybody else got here. Um, and you've probably taken like an echinacea cold vitamin or something like that at some point in your life. Okay, this 
is blanket flower, blanket flower, sorry, and its scientific name is Gallardia. Some people call it fire wheel. So why wouldn't we just call it fire wheel instead of Gallardia? Um, you know, it's a more exciting name and it's a lot easier to remember. But, you know, as I said, some people call this blanket flower, some people call it fire wheel. And, you know, in another state, they might call it something completely different. So it gets confusing. Um, you know, I also just looked up a flower um, the other day that I didn't know what it was. And it was a bunch of people had written that it was a buttercup. Well, there's a lot of flowers that everybody calls buttercups. So it can get confusing. So because every plant has only one scientific name, that makes us sure that we know what we're talking about. When I tell you I've got a particular plant, you know exactly uh, what I'm talking about and we don't get all confused. This is baby parsley. We planted that together by seed. It's still very young, but as it matures, it will get old and it will reseed itself. So we'll probably have parsley here for a long time to come. Parsley is the host plant for the black swallowtail, same as the fennel is. They are all in the same family, parsley, fennel, and carrots too. We've got some garlic chives. These will be blooming in the fall. The yarrow is in full bloom and there are love bugs here. The love bugs are back. So it's working. We're attracting the pollinators. They are really enjoying the nectar of these flowers. And right here we have the little tree that we planted right before we left. It's doing really well. Does anyone remember what kind of tree it is? This is a sassafras tree, and there's a little ladybug. It's a really cool tree because it's unusual in that it has three different types of leaves. So this leaf has three lobes. This leaf has two lobes. See? It's like a mitten. And then this leaf has no lobes. So that's unusual um, for a tree to have three different leaves. Um, and this tree has always been valued um, by Native Americans as well. And then when people from Europe came here, they actually fought over it because it has a great flavor. They um, make root beer out of it and it's always been attributed with a lot of desirable qualities for food and medicine. Um, and the reason we planted it is because it is the host of the spice bush swallowtail. So also a swallowtail but a different species than the black swallowtail. The spice bush swallowtail is the one we had two years ago that's bright green and it looks like a snake with huge almost hypnotic blue eyes. We haven't had them again, but if we keep planting sassafras, which we have been, we will eventually get some more. That's how you get caterpillars. People ask me sometimes, where can I buy a caterpillar? Well, you don't buy caterpillars, silly. You plant the plant that they need and they will come. So if you plant it, they will come. So this is the reason I chose this garden today because I was sure that the blueberries were gonna be right by today. And I was gonna pick some, but they, alas, still have a ways to go. They're not blue yet, but if you notice, if you remember the pink flowers that were on this bush just a couple months ago, they looked a lot like the fruit. So that's typical because fruits all start out as flowers. So you don't get any fruit unless you get flowers first. And then each flower gets pollinated, and if it gets pollinated, then 
it starts to grow into a fruit. So this blueberry bush has been pollinated. That means our pollinator garden is working. Look at all these blueberries. Can't wait for these to ripen. Well, it looks like I'll have to let you go. I have a whole lot of weeding to do. That's what happens when it rains. I put a sprinkler on your garden and so it's been well watered, but that means that more weeding needs to be done. And the broccoli is going to seed and it's dropped a lot of seeds. That means there'll be much more broccoli next winter. You can see these pods aren't ready yet. When they're green, the seed isn't mature yet. So a lot of people try to cut everything off as soon as it turns brown, but a lot of times when it's brown, the seed is still processing. So you won't get mature seeds that will grow new plants if you don't let them mature naturally on the plant. So we let this one mature naturally. We're gonna have lots more broccoli next year. Can't wait to see you all next year. And I will be sending you more videos. Happy Earth Day. Take some time to say thank you to the Earth for providing pretty much everything we need to be alive. It's a beautiful day to be alive. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.